with over 100,000 DVDs to choose from, including classics, new releases, and TV series, there has never been a better time to join Netflix. Visit netflix.com slash labrats for a free two-week trial. Plans start at $4.99 a month. You keep each movie as long as you want, and there are never any late fees. Cancel any time, plus watch movies over the Internet for no extra charge. Visit netflix.com slash labrats. Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. You see, we, we've got someone behind the camera there who goes to a lot of trouble to make sure that we're ready to go when uh, the camera rolls. And My name's Andy Walker. And we just do this. I'm Sean Carruthers. Well, you know, it's, you know, after a hundred and God knows it, how many episodes, you have to open it in a new way every time. Excuse me, Mr. Walker, you deviated from the exact script we've used for every single episode for the last 132 episodes. I'm sorry. 133, 34, it's something like that. What was I've that you said? It. Yeah, there's so many of them that are exactly the same. It's just, I get so bored. Anyways. Get down the show. Funny enough, we're going to talk about sound. Sound. And hopefully mute buttons. <laughs> yes, I hope so. All right. So, uh, yeah, so sound. Today we're going to talk about speakers. Surround sound. <clears throat> sound yes. that surrounds. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, well, yes. And what it means. Well, I think uh, part of this is because people have a little bit confused sometimes about what those numbers mean when it comes to speaker system. 2.1, 5.1, 7.1. What's what Stereo. does that stand for? Seven. What's the point one? Why not point six? Right. Exactly. So point two and a half. You know what? We're going to explain what all of that means in this episode. There you go. Uh, surround sound demystified today on Lab Rats. Um, but first, a message from somebody or something or some promo thing or whatever. It's probably about my books, I would imagine. Yeah. Or maybe it's about Biff. Could be. Anyway, let's take a break. When we come back, surround sound demystified from Lab Rats today. I'm Sean and Andy. Hooray! And right. Biff! And Biff, too. After this. So... Um, I th have to apologize because I think it's the I have been drinking Red Bull today and I think I'm just a little punchy from that. Oh, so it's your fault. <laughs> it's my fault. See, I was going to take the blame, but no, it's all you. Too much Torina. Take responsibility. The, the, I'm having a flashback now, except in reverse to the episode where I was uh, torqued up on uh, on Pepsi. Pepsi's. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's Red Bull for me. There you go. Okay, so today on the show, <laughs> we're going to talk about lots of speakers and speakers. making sound sound really good for your TV. I guess it's supposed to be your computer too. Yeah, just speaker sets in general. So it could be attached to your computer. It could be attached to your home theater setup. It could be somewhere else. Who knows? And I think we want to dedicate this episode to Vince Bognot, our favorite 12-year-old viewer who I think he actually emailed us and said, Hey, this guys, his idea. how about surround sound? So yeah, this is for you, Custom Vince. configuring it. So we're, we're going to talk about the breakdown of what the various steps in that are. So. Okay, good. So uh, let's start. So what is surround sound per se, mister? Well, let's, let's start before that. Okay. Okay, so back in the old days, everything was, was in mono. Which means one speaker. One speaker. One sound one source. Seals. Sound source, yeah, one channel of audio. Everything comes through the same speaker. So there you go. That's what people lived with for a long, long time. Right. And then I sort of cheated by taking this back down, but... Stereo. Stereo. Two channels. Two left channels. and right. Left and right. So th this set right here that you're seeing right now is the Creative Gigaworks T40, which is fairly new. And it's actually a little bit, uh, a little bit oddball in one sense in that it is just a plain stereo set. Mm -hmm. so, but this is what people had for the longest time. Um, and uh, it was basically everything you needed to make the sound was in these little cabinets. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, they're typically broken down. I don't know. Well, yeah, I guess this comes off, so that's, that's good. If not, I've just broken these speakers. But you've got uh, multiple components inside these speakers, typically larger ones and smaller ones. There will be woofers and tweeters, or mids in case of uh, three different sizes. So the, the bigger they are, the lower the sound they can produce. So the bass, like the boom, 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 that 
That'll come out of the big like ones. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, boom. got it. Just check it. And then tweeters? The tweeters are the little ones, and yeah. those are the really high pitch sounds. Like what? Like what? Okay, got it. Very good. All so right. there you go. So and the mid range? The mid range sort of does the stuff in, in the middle. In between. Like your yeah. voice. Like human voice or a lot of the, the rest of the audio that's in there. But but you can generally do it with uh, with less than three speakers. You can do it with just one big one that'll accomplish all of it, but by spreading it out into high pitched and low pitched, it sort of increases the fidelity of your sound. Got it. Okay, good. So now back I'm trying to remember how many years ago it was now. There's a company called Bose. They were the first ones to do this that I'm aware of. But it, it may not have been them that first did this. But they, they had this set of speakers that came out that were just tiny little things. And they, they sounded great. And they, they looked like tweeters, basically, the tiny little speakers that were out there. But it still sounded full. Mm. And this is where you start getting into these crazy numbering schemes. Because what, uh, what was done at that point is they actually broke the speakers in two, into different components. So one of the nice things about the human ear is you can actually trick it a little bit. The bass sound is not as directional as the high-pitched audio. Mm. So you don't actually have to have, to achieve stereo fidelity, you don't have to have the bass coming from these exact positions where this is. So you right. separate the sound up like this. Yeah. This is your left channel, this is your right channel, and this, it's all converging on your ear over there. Mm -hmm. But the bass sound doesn't have to come from here and doesn't have to come from here. In fact, it can come from another place in the room altogether. Mm -hmm. And so what uh, happened then is they broke that part off, they put all the bass off into a new component called the subwoofer, uh, which is this gigantic box. The so, deeper the sound, the larger the box? Right. OK. Um, well, I'm not 100% sure that always follows, but the, uh, bigger the, speaker. the, the, the big speaker there and the, the more pounding power, the more air it can move essentially, mm. the, uh, the louder it will be and the, the better quality. Lower frequency. Uh, lower frequency yep. you can get. So, um, so this doesn't actually go with this. It doesn't. But anyways, before we get rid of these, yes. what this would uh, come to, just so you're aware that these come separately and this is from another kit, this would become 2.1. So the point 0.1 is the subwoofer. Okay, so they separate out the bass into a separate speaker. It's not a full channel, so it's they call it point one of a channel, but it's just a, I guess it's just a nomenclature. Right, so, so the point two. one just means there's that subwoofer somewhere point in that one. setup. Very good, okay, good. All right, so there you go. Now that you've broken this out, it actually, uh, and you have this somewhere over here, and because we can have this anywhere here, I'm just gonna move this over to the side, so now we can actually start. Yeah, there's, a, there's uh, some treats in there, Biff. When we fire this up later, you'll find out how treatful they are. Get over here. So now, you can actually bring out 4.1. Ah. So this is starting to get into rudimentary surround sound territory. Yes. Here. And so there was actually a 4.1 specification way back when? There was. It was, okay. Yes. So this is the next evolution after 2.1. Next evolution okay. since that. So now what you have is you have left, left right, right, but okay. those are now front. Right. And you've got left and right, right back. OK, got it. I think that would actually be in reverse from what we're seeing here, but whatever. So you get the point. So these would go in front of you. These would go behind you. So you would sit in here. In the middle, yeah. So we actually will put Biff in Biff here in the middle. and turn these speakers around to face no. Biff. Oh, he doesn't like our, our audio. So, okay. so Bye -bye. Now, now you have this 4.1 thing. And this yes. can go off somewhere else into the, uh, into the room. OK, good. And, uh, this doesn't matter. This can actually go under your chair. You can go behind the wall, <coughs> anywhere it is, because it's, it's not directional. It's non-directional, yeah. so it'll it'll f fit into that room somewhere, and you'll be able to hear it. Basically, all it is is the low quality or the low frequency pounding, right? Essentially, you can feel the it as response. much as you can hear it, right? Yeah, you can Some feel cases. it definitely, yeah. and, and this is why you may want to put like a foam pad underneath this if you're in an apartment building because your neighbors downstairs will not like the fact that you have this yep. in there necessarily. Right. Okay, good. So, All right, so that's 4.1. That's 4.1. So so left and right in the front, mm -hmm. left and right in the back, or to the mm -hmm. right side of your ears, actually. You don't always right. have to be behind. It can sometimes be to left and right, just behind right. your ears. Yeah, and uh, what this requires is a little bit of processing from the, your computer. And you'll notice on some computers that they have multiple outputs now for speakers. Yeah. So you've got uh, the front, then you've got the sub, mm -hmm. 
and you've got the rear on these things. So it'll be three different uh, plugs on the back of your system, mm -hmm. potentially. Mm -hmm. And so what it will do is the when it's creating surround sound, it will actually take some of that audio and put it to the back. Now, when you're playing a movie, what that is, typically in a 4.1 surround system, you'll have the main audio up front, separated stereo. Yeah. But things that are meant to be surround will be kicked back using special coding right. into the rear channels. So you're talking about and the, the sound behind, so the, the main action is left and right there, yes. right? Uh, and then in behind you, you have like the subtleties, right? You'll have the birds tweeting in the trees. You'll have the yes. wind blowing in behind you. Mm -hmm. The bullets whiz from the left-hand side across your ear to the right, and actually it's moving from the left speaker in front of you to the right speaker behind you, that yeah. kind of thing. So it's effects, environmental yeah. type stuff, Or if right? there's a car going through the frame this way, you'll hear it uh, disappearing into the background, that sort of thing. Okay, so. Good. so this is all dependent on a sound processor. Right. Now, a computer has, ha has that mostly built into the sound card, right? Yeah. In, in case of a, of a television, mm -hmm. you're dealing with a, a home theater receiver that will do this. Right. Correct? Yeah. So you'll, you'll have to have some way to get those into the multiple channels. Otherwise, okay. you can just set this up to duplicate. Everything that's over here will also be duplicated over here. Right. It won't be true surround, but it'll actually be surrounding you, but not to four discrete channels. It'll just be two doubled up, right. potentially. So you can, you can do that if you like. Now, 4.1 isn't the most common standard no. these days. 4.1 existed for a fairly short time mm -hmm. for, uh, for uh, computer audio and, uh, and home audio because that was quickly replaced by something that became more standard uh, in the theater, and that was 5.1. 5.1, right. 5 that's sort of the one, that's, that's what we hear about all the time today. You want to go yeah. to the, the movie theater, 5.1 surround yeah. sound. Well, the movie theater is even a little bit more than that these days. Um, they've gone into crazy Dolby digital theater surround and all of these things, which can be like eight, seven more one, speakers. Eight yeah. One, yeah. So, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Mm -hmm. But so what we have now with 5.1, and this is the most common one you will see at, at home, whether it's your home theater or with your computer when you're talking surround. Right. So if you need surround, what this will do now is, again, you've got front left, front right, mm -hmm. rear left, and rear right. Mm -hmm. But this is the, the trick on this one, is you've actually added a center channel now mm -hmm. in addition to the two front ones. So this one will sit essentially right on top of your TV, like so. Yeah. And uh, what will happen now is your front left and your front right mm -hmm. will actually only carry information that's all left or all right, right, or you know some sort of version of that. Most of the stuff, speaking, whatnot, will actually go into your center channel. So that's dialogue. That's sort of the central audio action. Right. Right. Okay, so anything that's the focus now goes center, and this okay. will take up again the same sort of thing that these rear channels used to take up. Sort of environmental noises, uh, things that are moving from one area to another. They'll, they'll provide the directional cues right. rather than taking up the bulk of your audio. That's right. now delivered to the center channel. Perfect. Okay, great. So that's so. that's your main system, 5.1. Yep. And uh, there's 6.1 available, which, which will add another one on the back. Center back. Yeah. There's 7.1, uh, right. which actually has two on the sides and yeah. two on the back oh. and no center back. Right. And then there's 8.1, which I believe adds the, the center on the back as well. So that's now going all the way around you. Right. So, I mean, you have to th start thinking to yourself, is this overkill? Do, do I really need that many speakers? Mm -hmm. For the most part, you can actually reproduce the majority of the sounds that you want on two. Right. Because you can actually encode audio cues uh, psychoacoustically even in two speakers in front of you. Excuse me while I move the cat. Thank you. So it's, it's not ideal. Breaking it out into an actual surround configuration will do the majority of the work for you. But you know, is it worthwhile stepping up from 5.1 to a 7.1 or 8.1 system? No. Especially at the higher cost of those systems? Probably not and, for uh, most people. <laughs> what can oh, well. you do? So, uh, but if you look at the back of your DVDs these days, your movie DVDs, you're going to see 5.1. Generally, DVDs are engineered using 5.1 sound, mm -hmm. right? And they come in other two encoding technologies, usually both actually. One's DTS, and the other one's Dolby. Mm -hmm. So just two technologies used to encode the sound from two different companies, basically. Did you know that? Yes, you did. No, you didn't. I remember. I remember. I know THX is also involved in, in sweetening the audio as well. Well, THX is just a formula to actually yeah. replicate the uh, the sound from the way that they engineer it at the theater on your home theater setup. George Lucas created. That's right, George Lucas. 
for Rashi Star Wars. Yes. But anyway. And named after his one of his earlier movies, THX 1138. Thank you for that piece of trivia. Pretty good. I got a million of them. Yeah, you do. He's a trivia master. Okay, good. So what else do we want to know about this? So when I go out and buy uh, my speakers, mm -hmm. you have to remember that you need a device that's going to actually do the sound processing on your computer. Either your sound card has to support 5.1, mm -hmm. or a home theater receiver mm -hmm. process the sound. Yes. So for this one right here, this all of these speakers up here are from a Logitech set that I've had, the Z5450. Mm -hmm. And this is a slightly older set, but I, I like it a lot still. And uh, one of the reasons is that you know, a lot of people when they do a home theater setup, they'll actually go and get an amplifier or a receiver to do all of that work for them. So you've got another you know, several hundred dollar piece of equipment out there, maybe up to a thousand dollar. And you know, I'm, I figured I don't want that much stuff kicking around. I'm going to get the speaker set anyways. Right. So I actually got this, uh, this set from Logitech because it comes with this processing unit in here, which takes the signal and take it uh, through inputs on the back. It's got to optical. It's got a coaxial, it's got regular analog inputs, uh -huh. and you can actually switch between them on the remote uh -huh. for, for this set. And it'll actually break them, determine whether they're Dolby, break them into the proper surround sound, and uh, away you go. Now, this is uh, designed for your computer or for your TV. Which one do you use it with? Um, you can use it with both, really. Oh. So I think it's designed initially for computers, uh -huh. um, but it has uh, the components on the back necessary for input uh, for your home theater computer. computer. So you can plug your DVD straight into this if you're using optical output. Got it. Um, it doesn't, this particular set doesn't handle um, HDMI, uh -huh. but... You know, that's something you would plug directly into your receiver. This is where a receiver would come in real handy. Right. But, it, yes, you do have to have this processor, essentially, that will break it up into those components if you're doing it for home theater. Cool. Now, the, you can do it as, for as cheap as? Uh, this set was about $500. You can get uh, other sets a little bit cheaper. Mm -hmm. You can get uh, the bundle with an amplifier and a bunch of speakers for as low as $1,000. Maybe right. even a little bit lower if, yeah. they're, if they're lower quality right. or, or quieter. And that, that's another thing that we should mention is how do you rate these speakers for sound? And typically it's in something called watts. Right. Um, and the, the sort of rule of thumb that people have used is uh, the higher the wattage, the louder they go, which is not strictly the only thing that it represents. Uh -huh. But uh, you know, if you have a speaker that's uh, 50 watts, you can break that uh, you know, among 50 watts here, 50 watts here, 50 watts here, 50 watts here, and so on. We've got 250 watts here now. So a speaker that used to be 250 watts broken up among these things achieves the same sound power. Uh -huh. And then you've got your subwoofer, which is also a certain amount of wattage. Got it. And a lot of times that's even better. And one thing I will, a little buying tip, is if you have a chance to buy something that's higher wattage, even if you're not going to use it and crank it high up, Increasing the wattage on your set actually increases the clarity of the speaker set, even at lower ranges, oh, cool. typically. So if you get a set that's only 50 watts total, it might be a little bit muddy, even at lower ranges. And when you crank it up, it's not going to sound all that good. Mm -hmm. But if you've got something that's like 1,000 watts, even if you're running it at a lower range, typically it'll sound a lot better, okay. even at those lower volumes. You don't have to crank it to get the value out of a 1,000 watt speaker set. Perfect. OK, good. All right, well, let's take a break. Um, and when we come back, I think we have some pictures and some final thoughts around uh, 5.1 surround sound. All right, that's after this. Where did that come from? Do you know that Debiff is 5.1 as well? 5.1 what? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Appendages. Look, it's front, in the left and right, mm -hmm. rear and rear back. You have your, your woofer. Actually, this is a woofer, and this is your 0.1. That's a meower. Oh, it's a meower. Okay, well, I guess we need a dog for that demo. Yes, yeah, this, this, this other side might be a woofer. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. We always have to bring it down to that level. I know. <laughs> Sorry. And you wonder why we have so many 12-year-olds 12 watching us. I like our 12-year-old audience. I, I like them, too. Uh, I like them a lot. You're never going to get the 50-year-olds talking about they like them woofer. Too. <laughs> That's true. Good point. All right. Now for the toilet humor. Let's move on. It's picture time. <laughs> are these in surround test sounds? <laughs> yeah, well? They absolutely are. Wow. Picture time. Uh, let's see. 
There we go. So this is our viewer, Sam. Yes. He's currently at UC Berkeley. Ah, very and good. Which I lived I in Berkeley for two years. I know you did. So I did. So there you California. go. California. And I'm I'm hoping that uh, Sam here has actually fallen asleep after a huge study session rather than falling asleep after this past episode. <laughs> <laughs> Not if he's listening to surround sound. At a kajillion watts. Hey, can we engineer this in surround sound so it so like you're at the way at the back and the back speakers, I'm at the front speakers? We could, but I'm not gonna run damn. Okay. All right. <laughs> Wait a second. This is a bit strange. Yes, this is uh this is James who's uh in uh, Cheshire in the UK. In the UK. And he's showing us pictures of him and his cats. But I, I'm not 100% sure these are really his cats. That's not real cats. Cheshire cats. These are, uh, and these look like lol cats. <laughs> Icon has lab cats. Mm. So anyways, All right. so there we go. This, this one on the top is particularly tiny. So what's the story here? Is he just decided he didn't have cats, so he wanted to Photoshop them in, or what? I really don't know. Hmm. Well, I like it. Good effort. Excellent effort. <laughs> Creative uh, there, James, in Cheshire. So, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for sending those in. All right, and one more. No, nope, that's it. That's it. So sad. I'm so sad when picture time is over. I love pictures of you guys. So send some more pictures. Yeah. Then. Of you, your pets, Re your teas, real or imagined pets, real or imagined. Uh, your uh, your family, if you like. Uh, your what woofers. else? Your woofers and your tweeters, and uh, all that kind of stuff. We love to see it. And uh, if you're in an exotic location, all the better. And okay. if you're an exotic dancer. We won't go there. <laughs> this is PG, you know. Yes, it is. You're the one that was I'm an talking exotic about dancer. Both. Oh, that's too exotic. I'm out of here. You don't like that? All right. I'm out of All right. Here. Well, if <laughs> see, you know, I lose them every time. What can I say? This is surround sound. I'm doing this from the other end of the. All right. So he's in your back left hand speaker right now. Oh, and no, Biff's abandoning me too. All right. Well, that's it for Lab Rats this week. Don't forget to check out our shows. We have tons of episodes at labrats.tv. Uh, you can send email and pictures to us at feedback at labrats.tv. And uh, if you want to check out our forums, you can reach us there at cyberwalker.com slash forums. <laughs> hey, I have a new co-host, and he's about as smart as Sean. Crustaceans. Anyway, that's it for us. My name's Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye. Are you ready? Hello and welcome to Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker and I'm really tired. Oh! That looked like it hurt. I did. I'm gonna have. Alright, Andy's awake now. <laughs>